Good morning, Grade Six. Welcome back to Grade Six Math Maths class. Hope you all are doing great today. In the previous class, we had discussed the first five questions of revision time exercise. Today, let's discuss the rest of the questions. So, let's start with question number six today. So, it says arrange the following angles in ascending order and classify them as acute, obtuse, and reflex angles. So, here you are given a few angles. You have to identify and classify them as acute, obtuse and reflex angles. So what is an acute angle? An angle which measures less than 90 degree and greater than 0 degree. So the measure will be between 0 degree and 90 degree. An obtuse angle is one in which the measure is between 90 degree and 180 degree. That is it will be more than 90 degree but less than 180 degree. A reflex angle is one which is more than a straight angle that is more than 180 degree but less than a complete angle that is less than 360 degree. So for a reflex angle, the measure will be between 180 degree and 360 degree. Now observe the measurement of the angles given here and classify them accordingly. Let's discuss the next question now. It says based on the given figure, name at least one acute angled triangle, right angled triangle, obtuse angled triangle, scalene triangle, isosceles triangle and equilateral triangle. So in a previous class, we learned about different types of triangles. So a triangle is a polygon which has got the least number of sides. That is, there are three sides made up of three line segments. So two types of classifications are possible for triangles. One classification is based on the sides, that is the length of the sides. The other classification is based on the angles the sides enclose. So based on the sides, we can classify triangles as equilateral triangle, scaling triangle and isosceles triangle. So equilateral triangle is a triangle in which all the sides are of the same length. A scaling triangle is one which has got all the three sides different in length. An isosceles triangle is one in which two of the three sides will be equal in length. Now that's the classification based on the length of the sides. Now, based on angles, we can classify triangles as acute angled triangles, right angled triangles and obtuse angled triangles. An acute angled triangle is one in which all the interior angles are less than 90 degree. So, a right angled triangle will be one in which one angle of the triangle is a right angle or one angle is equal to 90 degree. An obtuse angled triangle is one in which one of the angles is an obtuse angle that is one of the angles is more than 90 degree. Now this is the classification of triangles based on the types of angles they enclose. Now look at the textbook for question number 7 you can see a figure is given there. Observe the figure carefully and you have to identify and name one each of each type of triangle. For example Triangle ABC, please look at your textbook, see the figure. Triangle ABC, that is a right angle triangle. Then, triangle ACG, that is an equilateral triangle. You can also see the symbols given on the sides or the line segments of the triangle. The symbols do match, which means the lines are all of the same length. So, similarly, observe the figure and identify each type of triangle and name them. Now let's discuss the next question, question number 8. Write at least two differences between a triangular prism and a triangular pyramid. You can see a triangular pyramid here, there we have a triangular prism. So both of these are solid shapes. A pyramid has got a polygon base and triangular faces which meet at a common point called the apex whereas a prism has got two identical bases and a rectangular or parallelogram faces around it. The cross section of a prism will be the same along its length but what about the cross section of a pyramid? Will it look the same along its length? No, the cross section here will be different from the cross section here. If you cut through along its length, the cross section will have different dimensions at different points in the case of a pyramid. So we have to write at least two of the differences of a triangular pyramid and triangular prism. You can write more but at least two differences need to be written. Now question number 9. 
what is the measure of the angle formed between the hands of a clock clockwise at the following timings two timings are given 7 and 1 7 pm and 1 pm what is the measure of the angle formed between the hands of the clock in the clockwise direction so when it is 7 o'clock the our hand will be pointing to 7 now we are told we have to measure the angle in the clockwise direction so the angle has to be measured like this now observe the angle is it a right angle no is it a straight angle no it is more than a straight angle so it is a reflex angle so we have to write the measure of the angle see i have got 12 divisions on the clock so one full revolution corresponds to 360 degree so can you say what will be the angle corresponding to one hour so there are 12 divisions marked on the clock so when the needles move from 12 and come back to 12 the needles will carve one full revolution or one complete turn so one complete turn corresponds to 360 degree you have learned that before so can you say what is the angle corresponding to one hour that would be the total 360 degree divided by 12 so this is equal to 30 degree so one hour represents 30 degree on the clock so when the hour hand moves from 12 to 6 it covers a straight angle which is equal to 180 degree and then when it moves from 6 to 7 it covers an extra 30 degree from 6 to 7 it is 1 hour so when it moves from 6 to 7 it covers 30 degree extra than 180 degree so what would be the total 180 degree plus 30 degree is equal to 210 degree so when the hour hand is at 7 o'clock the angle formed between the minute hand and the hour hand is equal to 210 degree i hope this is clear to you now find out the angle formed between the hands of the clock when the hour hand is at 1 that is when it is 1 pm hope this is clear to you let's discuss the 10th question now compare the properties of the diagonals of a square and a rhombus so we have learned about quadrilaterals and six different types of quadrilaterals a square is basically a rectangle which has got all four sides equal now all the angles in a square will be right angles the diagonals bisect each other at right angles now for a square both the diagonals are equal in length too now this is a rhombus we can see the two diagonals not seem to be of the same length but they intersect each other at right angles now what about the interior angles angle e angle h angle g and angle f the opposite angles will be of the same measure but are they right angles no they are not right angles now when you have a rhombus in which all the interior angles are right angles then you will get a square so you can say a square is a rhombus which has got all the four sides equal and all the interior angles are right angles now you have to compare the two shapes compare their diagonals to and write down their properties in your notebook and that's all for today children let me remind you your homework for the day so you have to complete all the questions from revision time exercise and you can also see the mcqs following revision time exercise complete them as well once you are done with all the answers please do take a picture and send this to teams so that's all for today children we'll meet in the next class with a new chapter till then bye